we have a sample problem here, an arm AD of an excavator shown in the figure. So that would be AD. Okay, so AD uh, can be approximated to the steel tube or steel tube of outer diameter which is 10 inches. Okay. And we have an inner diameter that will be 9.5 inch and a length which is 100 inch. With a viscous damping coefficient of 0 0.4, the arm DE have approximated as a steel tube of the outer diameter which is have 7 inch and the inner diameter which is 6.5 inch and in a length of 75 inch with the viscous damping coefficient of 0 0.3. So we'll estimate the equivalent spring concept and equivalent dampening coefficient of the excavator assuming that the base AC is a fixed point. So first things first, we need to draw the pre-body diagram of this system. So drawing that one, so expressing the uh, spring constant, uh, spring values and also the dampening constant. So let's do the pre-body diagram. So I'm going to draw here the fixed point A. So, so we have here our fixed point that will be your A in this one. So I'm going to draw here uh, a ground hash to illustrate a fixed point. So this, this will be our point A. Then drawing the line which is from point A to D. So showing here. So we have here A going to D. So I'm drawing here a line. Okay. So this is now inclined um, 60 degrees. So showing here, we have the 60 degrees angle here. This is our point D and it is angled 60 degrees. Noticing this one, we have the angle between this side, the uh, this part AD and DE, they are 90 degrees. So we're forming here a triangle, and the length of this one is just only um so this 75. 75 inch and the, on the part AD we have the longer one that will be 100 inch in length so AD will be a longer one compared to DE okay, so representing that one so I'm going to draw here the angle for this part so since it is angled this is angled 90 degrees Okay. And we have here the last part that will be the point E. Okay. So this is our point E. Now, um, so since we have here the properties for AD and DE, so we have the corresponding displacement for your D, so that will be extending at this line so we have the movement or let's say the uh, displacement no? so we have here the displacement for your uh, DE so we have here displacement of X at this side so I'm gonna name this one as let's say this is our um, so this X of gonna name this one to be take this one so I'm gonna name this one as X of one let's say that one so let's change this one X of two I'm gonna name this one as an X of two displacement for the bar uh, for the var DE then we have here the corresponding displacement of this um, so this bar AD, so this 
uh, from here the original state moving here so we have the displacement x sub 1 initially that is the first part we have here or let's say this is uh, on the reverse direction maybe so you can since we, the displacement is going down since the deformation is going down there so we have here uh, x sub 1 uh, it can be extended here as the displacement of your x sub 1 now uh, trying to combine this one so we can uh, transpose this one here going down here so we can draw the displacement to be at this part so this will be our x sub 1 then we have here the displacement or let's say the total displacement or the resultant displacement between the two of these two parts okay. so let's say this is now our, our y since we have in the displacement of the y direction assuming this so we have the total displacement so of this part which is your y so we have here this one and this one then we have form a hypotenuse so I made a projection here so I projected the DE and also the fixed point line from A going there so to form a right triangle so we have the 30 degrees here the last since the total will be since it is a right triangle so the total is 90 degrees now this is the same also we are trying to project here so we have here the body so this is the same angle of this one so this is also uh, 60 degrees and we have here your 30 degrees now um, to get the value of your x sub 2 x sub 1 so we can use the uh, trigonometric functions here so to get the value so we have to get the uh, for this the x sub 1 that will be using cosine so we'll be using cosine of 30 degrees is equal to your um, adjacent so that will be your x sub 1 then divided by your y which is your hypotenuse so that is the resultant of these two so we have the value of your x sub 1 is equal now to y cosine of 30 degrees now for the x sub 2 so we'll be using the sine of 30 degrees so our opposite that will be the x sub 2 then our hypotenuse it will be the y so we're writing that one we have your x sub 2 is equal now to y sine of 30 degrees now remembering our the work of the spring so we have the equation which is your work of the spring that is equal to one half k times the x squared so that is was i was discussed this uh, previous uh, previous uh, previous lecture now expressing that one in uh, the equation of our uh, properties or solution to the problem so we can rewrite here that our work um, let's say the total work that will be the work uh, the, the total work or work equivalent let's say work equivalent is equal to the work of uh, let's say AD of the bar AD plus the work that is being done by the work of BE so that will be the bar BE so we forgot to address the schematic of this one so since this is a spring and we have the dampening constant since it is being acted by a steel bar, a bar hollow bars and also it is being controlled by a viscous fluid so we'll draw here the schematic diagram also here so we'll be drawing here so what i've done here i have 
drawn the spring representing the bar AD and the viscous fluid that is acting on our call this uh, hydraulic cylinder or that is the damping constant of our system here so I'm drawing that one so we have that one here symbol here so I'm gonna name this one as your k sub 1 and we have the damping constant c sub 1 here so trying to uh, separate this one so it is being represented like this one so the same also will going to the bar b e okay so we have done the same bar uh, procedure that i have done here at point a uh, bar a d so the same also we have here the representation for the k of k spring of the bar b a and then the being constant of bar b e now so going back to the equation, so we can e express this one in terms of k equivalent. So that will be one half, no? So that will be one half times the k equivalent. Then we have the displacement of our overall, which is your y. So this will be y squared, so, which is equal now to the to the work of the bar AD. Okay. So this is also one half times the k of k sub 1 then multiply by the displacement which is the well this um, for the bar uh, x sub 1 okay. then plus 1 half k sub 2 we have x sub 2 since the value of your x sub 1 and x sub 2 is this one so we're going to substitute here, substitute the value here in the equation so we have so we can cancel out already now sorry we can cancel out already our one half here so since it is the same values on the other side so then we have your k equivalent that will be y squared then times your k sub one then the value of x sub one which is y cosine of 30 degrees so that be y cosine so this is squared sorry so cosine of 30 degrees squared plus k sub 2 that will be y sine of 30 degrees uh, squared raised to squared okay. so we can also factor out which is common here so we have your k equivalent so that we can cancel also the y squared here on the other side so we have your k sub 1 that will be y squared times cosine of 30 degrees squared plus your k sub 2 that will be y squared times the sine of 30 degrees that will be squared so we can cancel now your y squared here so this one is 0 cancelling out Considering that one, okay. So finally, we have the value of your k equivalent is equal now to your cosine of 30 degrees squared. So that will be k sub 1. So that will be k sub 1, then plus your k sub 2. So that will be multiplied the sine of 30 degrees squared. So trying to press down in your calculator the value of cosine of 30 degrees squared. So the value of cosine of 30 degrees squared that will be um, 3 fourth. So try to press that in your calculator. Now for the sine of 30 degrees, so we have the value of k sub 2 that we multiply to 1 fourth. Now we have the value for your k equivalent. So let's try to box our answer here and highlight this one. Now remember in this equation from our previous uh, lecture, so we have the k equivalent, so that is for a single bar, let's say a bar, a single bar, 
of your AD and bar D. So that will be the force is equal to divided by the resulting deflection. So we have the derivation here and we arrive the values of your K equivalent. So let's say this is your P sub 1 that will be area times the modulus of elasticity then divided by the length of the bar. Since we have the area for the case of 1, so that will be the bar AD. Okay. So the area is equal now to pi over 4. Then we have the diameter which is 10, okay, 10 inches minus the 9.5 inches. Then multiply by the 30 times 10 to the power of 6 the modulus of elasticity of the steel and this is divided by the length of L sub 1 which is uh, 100 inch okay now so we have the value which is equal to 2.29 so that will be times 10 to the power of 6 so that we pound pound force per square inch uh, per inch now for the k sub 2 so we're using also this is one and we have your area 2 and the modulus of elasticity of the steel then you have your L length 2 so the same procedure we have done here so we have 7 square inch then we have 6.5 square inch and it will be multiplied by the modulus of the elasticity of steel to the power of 6 then it is divided by the length which is the 75 inch okay. then finally we have the value of 2.12 times 10 to the power of 6 that will be pound force Per inch so we have the k value here so substituting this one to the equation here so we can get the uh, k equivalent of the equation of the system or the, of the spring so let's do that so we have k equivalent from this equation in there so this is equal now to your three three fourths times the body of k sub 1 that will be 2.29 times 10 to the power of 6 so this is pound force per inch then plus we have your 1 fourth here then multiply by 2.12 times 10 to the power of 6 so that will be also the unit of pound force per inch then now finally we have the equivalent which is equal to so we have the value of 2.25 that will be times 10 to the power of 6 that will be pound force per inch now for the <coughs> the dampening or the dampening equivalent constant here in the problem so we'll be using the same also equation we're just going to replace so we'll be using also the work that is one half k x squared so we're going to replace only the value of your k as c equivalent to solve for the value of the c equivalent so we have one half uh, C equivalent uh, raised to squared. Then the same procedure that we have done to get to get the value of the K equivalent. So we have here C equivalent raised to squared, which is equal to one half. We have the C equivalent. I know this will be the C sub one. Then we have your X sub one squared plus one half C two x2 squared so cancelling our common here so we can cancel your one half here 
and the one half here then substituting here the resultant here we have your oh sorry this is y so let's change this one as the y value here so this is the resultant this is why we're this square now <clears throat> so we have the c equivalent now so to y squared substituting now the values of the x sub 1 and x sub 2 so we have your y cosine of 30 degrees squared plus c c2 that will be y sine of 30 degrees so raised to squared then we factor out the value of your we factor out the value uh, the y and the equation so we have c sub 1 that will be y squared multiplied by cosine of 30 degrees squared plus your c sub 2 that will be y squared sine of 30 degrees squared then cancel out in common we have here this one your y will be cancelled out so what is left now is c equivalent now that will be the value of the cosine of 30 so that will be the 3 fourths so your c sub 1 times your 3 fourths plus your c sub 2 multiplied, uh, multiplied by sine of 30 degrees squared so that will be 1 fourth okay. so now from the uh, given problem the value of your c sub 1 is equal to so we have here the viscous damping coefficient which is the value of 0 0.4 so your c sub 1 will be 0 0.4 then your c sub 2 so we have the value here 0 0.3 so we have the given unit of this one that will be pound per second square inch and this one will be also pound per second square inch now substituting that one to our equation so here we have the equivalent dumping in constant so that will be 0 0.4 pound per second square inch multiplied by 3 fourth plus 0 0.3 pound force second square inch that will be multiplied by 1 fourth so we have the equivalent constant dampening so we have 0 0.375 that will be pound for second inch so let's box the answer here are you looking at the overview of the solution here yeah. 